When I found this fabric at Liberty London, it reminded me of a Matisse painting. So you can only imagine how excited I was when I found out there's a Matisse exhibit at the Museum of Fine Arts. This is the perfect excuse to cut into my tan lawn and see if I can sew a dress in two hours and make it in time to wear it to the exhibit this weekend. So keep watching. Hi, I'm Tony, and this is So So Lounge. Now, it shouldn't come as a surprise to you that I love art because I love color and I love prints. And some of my favorite artists are the Impressionists, followed by the Post-Impressionists, and the Fauvists. Now, Matisse is kind of on the line between Post-Impressionism and Fauvism. He actually was one of the trendsetters for that. And this exhibit is happening this weekend. It is the kickoff with the members preview at the Museum of Fine Arts Houston. I'm so excited to go. And when I got the email, I thought, hey, this would be a great excuse to use my fabric and finally take it and cut it, which is still a little nerve wracking, and make a fabulous dress to wear to the exhibit. Because wouldn't it be cool to wear a dress that kind of looks like a Matisse painting while standing in front of a Matisse painting? That's my idea anyway. The pattern I have chosen for this is McCall's 8166. It is a level two learn to sew pattern. It is not super complicated. It has darts, it has an invisible zipper, and it has some flounces. Now, the version I'm going to make with this fabulous fabric is going to be version A with these crazy long sleeves because go big or go home. I mean, if you can't look eccentric at an art museum, it's the perfect place. And I like to go to exhibits dressed up because it's more fun, especially if you can look like the paintings. Now, this is going to be a two hour challenge. I am going to try my best to get it done. I have never timed um, this particular pattern. This is the first time I'm sewing it. But because it's a level two learn to sew pattern, I think I can do it in two hours. Um, I have everything cut out. All of my pattern pieces are marked. The notches are cut. I have the interfacing attached to my facings. I did all the markings on the inside so I can follow them when I get to the sewing part. And we are going to be heading over to the sewing machine and getting this started. Before I start a new sewing project, I always read over the sewing directions first because I like to know kind of what the plan is, how the pattern makers thought that the garment should be put together, and then kind of have an idea of the steps and what's coming next. Now, I don't always follow them, but they're a good guide to start with. This is a level two learn to sew pattern. So there are a lot of very specific instructions on how to sew a dart, how to put an invisible zipper. And I think there probably is how to sew a flounce as well, since those are the three uh, things that are specifically emphasized in this pattern. I know how to do most of those things. I'll, I'll review the flounces because I haven't done those in a while, but it's just a good idea to start there so that you kind of have a, a roadmap of the process. Now, my machine is set at a two and a half stitch length. I'm just sewing a straight stitch. The only thing I've kind of changed is my needle size. I'm using a 60 needle. That's also an eight. I'm not sure which is US and which is European, um, but that's the needle I'm using. It's for finer fabrics. This is lawn. It is 100% cotton and it is a very, very fine, fine fabric. So we are going to start with the darts. There are bust darts on the front. There are double ended darts on the back. And then we will head over to the ironing board and get those pressed and prep for the invisible zipper. Now, when I do these challenges, I have my trusty little timer with me so that I can keep track of my time because when I stop filming, I turn off the timer and then move things around and then reset it once or restart it once we get to the next step. So I try and keep myself honest so we can see if this can really happen in two hours. Um, but I think we can. I think I think I'm going to be able to do this. So I'm super optimistic. So I'm going to set my timer. Let me make sure that the sound is off and that it's on the flashing for 30 minutes and get started with the pinning of the darts. My darts are all sewn in and it is time to press them. Now with the bust darts, I'm gonna press them towards the waist and then um, we're gonna, I'm gonna use my pressing hand so we get a nice curve on them and get them to lay nice and flat. 
I think my iron's hot enough, yes. And then same for the other side. Let them cool for a sec. And then I'm going to put this over to the side and I'm going to press the back darts, which are the double ended darts. And the instruction said to press them towards the center back seam. So that is what we're going to do, even though it doesn't seem like that's what I really want to do. I want to press them out, but it says not to do that. It says to press them the other way. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to use my ham for the point at the bottom, just so that it doesn't, um, it doesn't look weird when I get to it. So I'm going to do each of the ends first. And then I will press the middle section once, once I've got the ends done. Now that the darts are all pressed, the next step for the pattern instructions is to sew in the invisible zipper. Now with an invisible zipper, you want to put it on the center back seam as much as possible. So you want to line up the coils with the center back seam so that it like fits perfectly into that seam and it's actually invisible. Now, one thing I think really helps with that process is to press the center back seam in place at the seam allowances before we go put the zipper in, because then we'll have a nice hard fold showing us where we need to press. And that is where my Dritz Easy Hem comes in. There is a 5 8 inch mark on this, and that is what I'm going to fold the center back along that line. I'm going to give it a quick press and that will give us a line to follow when we put in the invisible zipper. Invisible zipper requires a special zipper foot. So it's kind of this funny looking little plastic foot. Most machines nowadays, you can just buy them separately. You don't have to like, it's not like a unique thing like it used to be where you'd have to go, you know, buy the specific one made by the invisible zipper people. Most machines have them. So that's the good news. Um, but what you want to do is press your zipper. And it's not really pressing. It's you want to run the iron, the point of the iron right next to the coil, but you don't want to iron the coil because you'll melt it just to get it to kind of stand up a little more than when it comes straight out of the packaging. So now what we're going to do is line up our zipper along the edge of the seam line that we just pressed in. And the way we want to do this is it's kind of like counterintuitive. The zipper goes in so that the coil is against this fold line. And then once we put it all in, it's going to roll to the inside and you won't see it. And then the zipper tab will be on the right side. So to get started, we just want to start pinning things in. We're at the 30 minute mark. I have my darts sewn in. They are all pressed. I press the center back seam to put the zipper in and I got half of the invisible zipper in and it's not perfect. Now you don't have to sew everything perfect, but this is my Liberty fabric and I want it to be perfect. And I forgot that the last time I did this, I couldn't see the line that I pressed in to line up the zipper with. And so what I ended up doing was drawing in a line with heat erasable ink so that I could line up my zipper because even though I thought I could see that crease, I could not. I used to be able to see it and do it this way. And now I have the additional step of drawing a line. So I'm going to rip the zipper out and then I'm going to draw my line and re-sew it back in and I will restart the clock. And hopefully we will do better in the next 30 minutes to get more accomplished in the first hour than we have so far. My zipper is all ripped out. And I have my, all the loose threads all pulled out of this seam. Um, so we're ready to restart. And I am going to draw a line this time using this Dritt see-through ruler. It's really great. They have different um, markings on the side and you can just line it up with the 5 8 inch mark and then draw a line basically. So I'm just going to use that to put in this line for 
my zipper so that I have something to follow because that'll be easier to see. Um, but if you are not having eyesight issues, the pressing works just as well and it's a little bit faster. So I'm a couple of minutes into the second hour and I have not gotten as far as I had hoped. The side seams are in, the shoulder seams are in. I am just pressing everything into place. And then I'm going to go and finish my seams at my serger and then move on to the next step. I'm at my serger. I have all my seams nice and pressed. And if you're wondering why I am serging and finishing my seams after I have sewn them and pressed them, it's because this serger thread melts. I was using it for my blue linen jacket and I started to press it and it started getting all over the iron. So I learned my lesson. I am not going to do that on this dress and I probably need to invest in some new serger thread. I am not sure how old this is. Um, I know it's 100% polyester. I bought it at Hancock's to just kind of put that into perspective of how long I've had it. So I am using my Baby Lock Acclaim. This is a recent purchase. It was pricey, but I got to the point where I was tired of fighting with my old serger and it was time to upgrade. So I have a three thread narrow overlock stitch set, which took me a few minutes to figure out how to do because like I said, this machine's new and I am not super familiar with it, but I think it's going to give a nice tiny narrow serge edge on all my seams and it's going to look really nice and you know not add any additional bulk to my dress the dress is starting to look like a dress so i'm very excited about that next steps include doing the facing and finishing the neck putting in the sleeves finishing the sleeves and putting in the hem and i still have to do a little bit of finishing on the inside the zipper cannot be surged like the other seams. So I think I'm going to do a roll under um, and stitch finish on that because my fabric is um, kind of frayed a little bit on the edge. And since that's the zipper, I don't want that to ravel and get worse. And next I am going to be putting together this facing and then I will head back over to the serger to finish the bottom edge of it before we get back to more sewing. So I have my facing all prepped. It is sewn together. The bottom edge is all finished. And now I am going to pin it to the dress. And I am going to be pinning from the outside because it's going to flip to the inside. And it's really important that I get these dots matched up because that is going to give us the nice neckline and the point. And I made extra sure to get these marked on both the interfacing and the dress because that is never one of my strong points is making sure to transfer all the markings so i do have it all lined up and i'm excited about that i'm gonna lift my sewing machine so that i can get the neckline around a little bit easier than if i kept it flat and i am going to be sewing from the facing side so I can make sure that nothing gets um, messed up or, you know, bunched up underneath the um, feed dog. That way I can keep track of things. And it's also going to be smoother to sew it with the wrong side at the bottom. It looks like everything is in the right place. So that's super exciting. And next I need to clip these lines to make everything flip and then we will do some under stitching to attach the seam of the facing to the facing and that's going to give us a nice crisp edge around the outside and then we're going to go press my facing sewn on i am going to press the seam of the facing towards the facing and that is in preparation for under stitching now under stitching is one of those things that i literally never did when i was learning to sew because I didn't think that it really mattered. But it's just another step you can take to improve the look of your garment. By understitching, you are catching that seam allowance and pulling it towards the facing, which helps keep the facing flat against your body so that it doesn't pop up so you can see it on the other side of your neckline. So that's kind of the whole point for doing it. Um, I don't know if I didn't care or if it just didn't, seem like that extra step with, was worth that. I usually press my garment really, really heavily to try and get that little part of the neckline to lie flat if it did pop up, 
But this is the more professional way to do that so that you don't have to stress about your facing showing from, you know, the front right side of your garment. Now, pressing isn't necessarily something that's required for this step, but I found that, find that if you press the seam allowance over towards the facing, it makes it a lot easier to sew and you don't have to like worry about it rolling back into its original position. I finished my seams and the next step before we finish the bottom of the sleeve is to stitch in a basting row of stitches at a quarter of an inch and then we're going to go and press the sleeve at five eighths of an inch and then roll that down in order to finish finish this curve on the bottom of the sleeve so i'm just going to start with that basting My sleeve is all gathered and pinned in. My gathers are nice and flat, so grandma would be very proud. And I am going to take my time sewing this in place because I want to make sure it goes in nice and evenly. And I do not want to have to do this again. <laughs> my sleeves are all sewn in. They turned out really pretty. There are some teensy tiny little gathers along the um, arm's eye, but that's okay. They're not really noticeable. And I think I'm probably going to be able to press them out. All in all, they went in pretty easily and the sleeves are just absolutely gorgeous. You can see how beautiful they are. I'm so happy with this pattern and the way that everything is turning out. So once I got the sleeves on, I decided I was going to go try on my dress. And when I cut it out, I was kind of concerned about the the ease through the hips because I'm like right on the edge of the um, size 16, just depending on my weight for the day. And I wasn't sure if there's was gonna be enough ease to sit down in the dress. So I bumped it out to an 18 at the hips, which once I put it all back on was too big. Now, what I did, because I wasn't sure if this was gonna be a problem, I drew the size 16 seam line onto the fabric so i could just go in trim back to that line sew a 5 8 inch seam and now it fits perfectly it is not quite as big through the middle it has a more fitted look so i'm very excited about that but that does mean i did need to do some additional work and i need to go press those seams now that they're all sewn officially and refinish those the the seam allowances because i did cut off the part that was surged so I'm going to go do that real quick. Then um, now that we know that the seams are good, it's time to go in and finish the hem. All right. So we're in the home stretch. My hem is all pressed into place and I'm going to do a blind hem stitch on my machine because I still have to go in and hand tack the facings and um, to the shoulder seams and then also to the zipper. And I don't want to have to hand sew that hem. If you have a blind hem stitch foot on your sewing machine, it's fantastic. Once you get the hang of doing it, it is so much faster than hand stitching in a hem. I'm gonna start on the center back because that's just my habit. That's what I do. I'm gonna get this all lined up. I'm gonna get the stitch, then give it a quick press, and then I'm gonna show you what the final result looks like. <music> I'm finally finished. I'm going to go put on my dress and head to the museum.
have to say that going to a Matisse exhibit in a dress that's reminiscent of a Matisse painting was super fun. I had a really great time and I really love wearing this dress. Afterwards, we went to dinner at a nice restaurant and it was just a lot of fun to just look really colorful and vibrant in this incredible fabric from Liberty London. Now, the sleeves turned out really well. They're really pretty. I didn't make this dress in two hours, in case you were wondering. I didn't make this dress in three hours. Nope, closer to four hours to make this dress. By the end of hour two, I had finished the facing. Still needed sleeves and the hem. The sleeves actually had to be finished before they were attached. And so that took almost an hour to do. And then before I did the hem, I realized that it was a little bit too big through the hips because I had bumped out the pattern to a size 18 because I wasn't sure about the ease. It's a little bit too much. So I tapered it back down to a size 16. And so I had to redo all of that, redo all those seam allowances. That took some more time. And then I had to hand finish all the facing and attach it to the seams and the center back zipper. And then it was finally done right around four hours. So I woefully underestimated the amount of time it was going to take me to make this dress. And I really shouldn't have because the two hour dress project that I did back in the spring was a knit dress with no darts, no zipper, basic sleeves. I mean, like, and that took just over two hours. So I don't know what I was thinking, but for future reference, I think a three hour dress challenge would probably be more on the mark. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong with this dress. I ended up putting in the zipper twice. I ended up putting on the facing twice. And it was, wasn't because I didn't know how to do it. It was because I was really, really tired because I didn't get a lot of sleep the night before. So that was one lesson that I learned from this dress was don't slow when you're tired. I should have come home from work on Friday, taken a nap for an hour, and then went back to sewing because I think I would have been fresher, I would have been feeling better, and I wouldn't have made the dumb mistakes that I made just because I was tired and, and not paying as much attention as I should have. The other lesson I learned is that I am not a 16 in the top half from here up anymore. I've been working out and doing a lot of upper body weight training, and I'm a lot smaller than I used to be, so... I should have fit this dress once I put the zipper in um, because I could have made the adjustments and everything to fit the, the shoulders in through, you know, this, this whole part here. It's not huge, but it is big enough that it's a little bit uncomfortable to wear because it does shift while I'm wearing it. It makes me feel self-conscious that I'm showing too much cleavage. So I'm going to have grandma help me um, go back in and do some fitting to adjust some of the issues that I have, which is just, it's a little bit too big under here. So I think I'm going to take it in a little bit and taper it in this seam. And then I think that taking out the zipper, which I'm still not super happy with, um, I can also take it in a little bit more through this back area down to the waist and then leave this part the way that it is. So it's fixable. I got to wear it to the exhibit, so I'm super excited about that. And all in all, I really, really, really love this fabric. And even though I kept making mistakes and having to redo them so that it would be a better project, I was still happy to do it because I love this fabric so much and I love looking at it. And so let that be a lesson. When you love your fabric, you're gonna work harder to make sure it looks really good and that you do the best job possible. If you're feeling inspired by the gorgeous colors and prints, come with me on my shopping trip to Liberty London, where you can see incredible prints and colors. It's all coming up next. I will see you over there.